Hey everyone, this is Let's Get Practical with Daryl Girardier, and today we're talking about three questions to ask before you spend your church's money. Let's do this. Welcome to Let's Get Practical, the podcast about church communications from a practical standpoint. It's about what works and what doesn't. It's about helping you cut through all the clutter and noise and getting straight to the point. And today we're getting straight to the point on the three questions you need to ask before you spend your church's money on anything related to church communications, really in that whole tech print sphere, that whole nine yards, all that stuff. Let's talk about three questions you need to ask before you actually sign on the dotted line and you start spending money on things. And this is for me is this episode comes from experience and some stuff that I've learned along the way, the hard way, Um, because if you're like me, you probably get emails and solicitations for like the latest thing or this latest product, like this text, Uh, you know, a church texting app or a church app for that matter, an online giving solution, or, you know, you get a lots of, you get inundated with lots of little tiny things or how these people say that if they, if you do X, you know, your attendance in church will increase your website will do better, et cetera, all that stuff. And so you get pitched a lot of things on a day-to-day basis. And, and sometimes it's kind of hard to tell what's worth spending your money on and what's really worth investigating. So what I'm going to give you is a framework by which I kind of really decide if something's really worth our time investing and really spending our money on. Uh, and so it's, it's kind of the framework I use. It's a three part framework that really kind of walks me through three questions I ask before I, before I really you know spend the money on something. Because for me, I want to be really, really good with the church's resources. I don't want to be very flippant with the money. Um, you know, I don't want to do a whole lot of crash and burn. I want to spend it right and get it, you know, you know, if you will measure, measure twice, cut once. So I want to really and thoroughly investigate who we're spending our money on and then ask myself, is that really going to get us where we need to be? So these are three questions I ask when I'm walking through that process. So here we go. Question number one, am I their guinea pig? And here's what I mean by that. Um, are they a young company or are they an organization by which they are so young that they really haven't tested and proven themselves? Uh, so in other words, are they, they just coming out of the block out of the gate? So I end up being their guinea pig. Uh, in other words, they're going to test something with me or they're rolling out new features all the time and you hear this long spiel and all of a sudden before you know it, you're wrapped up in this this uh, organization that you've paid money for, for whatever that is and the app or whatever you're doing. And all of a sudden they just crash and burn because they weren't able to handle it. That's the danger when you are somebody's guinea pig is that all of a sudden you just become this thing where you get wrapped up inside of the, whatever they're doing. You invest your time and energy effort into it. You promote it to your congregation and guess what? They crash and they burn. Now that's also in terms of, and, and, and that's also in terms of like not only just the new companies, but established companies, especially established companies that will tell you, we'll bring you on board, but guess what? You want this feature? We'll, we'll build it for you. Well, then all of a sudden you're testing out a new feature that they haven't even built and tried without the churches. You are essentially their guinea pig. And that's really dangerous, specifically if it's a feature set that you really need. And online giving is a good example. You just don't want to be somebody's, when somebody says, we'll build that out for you. Okay, what's that mean? Like, what's your track record on that? You have to start asking those questions because those questions will help you understand whether or not that's really something they can do very well. And you really kind of want to wait till somebody's kind of proven themselves. Um, the other question, uh, the other thing you want to be wary of, if you hear the phrase, let me show you our roadmap, or this is where that's on our roadmap because roadmaps change. So if you don't know what a roadmap is, roadmap is essentially what a company would say, this is what we're going to do down the road. These are the things that we're going to do that we're going to make happen down the road. And if you just stick with us, you'll get these, essentially get these features down the road. Well, the problem with that is, is roadmaps change. People change, staffing changes, you know, their, their cash flow may change and they may, they may not be able to execute on those features. And then all of a sudden you're stuck with a website or with something that was supposed to have these new features, this new feature set. And all of a sudden it's not there. Uh, so I'm very weary of somebody says that's on our roadmap. I am much more in the, in line with what have you actually produced and published that's actually live and working and tested right now that I can use. That's the feature set I'm banking on when I'm investing money with somebody. So I'm not going to do a roadmap. Like roadmaps don't mean anything to me until you've actually shipped the product and it's tested and it's worked well. So first question I ask is, am I your guinea pig or am, am I their guinea pig? If, that, if that, the answer is yes, then I'm out. Question number two. What happens if they fail or if I want to leave? What's my backup plan? 
So when you look at some of these organizations, you can easily build a whole communication strategy around, say, like a texting campaign. So you sign up with this texting company and you go all of a sudden you onboard the entire church. Everybody's on board. They've all opted in with the keyword and they, you know, you're using it. And then all of a sudden, what happens if that company goes up in smoke? You know, they're gone. Can you expo- export out your users? Can you migrate your users from one service to another service without them having to sign up again? Um, what happens if all of a sudden you decide you want to leave? What's that experience going to be look like? Uh, what's that going to look like? What's what's the what is their offboarding process, if you will? You need to ask those questions on the front end. Uh, a few years ago, I had an experience with a rather large Christian media company in which we invested highly into their system of video delivery content. And when I decided we wanted out because our users were not using their content, they basically emailed every single user and told them I, Daryl Girardier, was personally responsible for canceling this account and that they should email me to let them know, to let me know that they, that we wanted back in and the church should never have canceled that account. They did that with a long list of other things. Uh, they would not give me all the user data. I didn't know who all signed up for it. I couldn't get an export of all the users. It was a whole long list of things. I just didn't know ask those questions at the front end because it didn't seem to me like somebody would ever do those type of things to somebody. And so that's when I said, no, I'm good. I'm done. I'm not, you know, this is, this is, this is not for me. So I, what I've learned from that is, is I asked the question, what happens if they go under? Well, what happens if I want to leave? In other words, what happens when the relationship breaks down? What's the plan? And what's the backup plan? You know what? We right now have a texting service and we're about to switch a texting to another texting service. So I want to make sure when we switch to that new texting service, what is my backup plan in case something happens wrong with that? It goes wrong. Where do else do I go? So I always want to keep that in mind. So question number two is what happens if they fail or if I want to leave? And then kind of the sub question if it is what's the backup plan? What am I going to do? What's plan B? All right. Question number three, how do they make their money? Now, to a certain level, you're thinking, well, it's not my business how they make their money because, you know, they're, you know, this is capitalism, you know, you, they're making their money, they're providing your service, everything's great. But actually how they make their money should actually really factor your decision. And here's what I mean. Uh, for a lot of these, or a lot of companies are coming on board with, they're offering you a free product. So they call it a freemium model. In other words, you get this base level of free product and then you buy premium features as an add-on. Uh, so a lot of companies do that. That's just, that's what, so that's what they do to grow their user base. And then they pound you heavy with marketing and they lock things out in order for you to force you to upgrade into the premium experience. And you've got to be really super careful about that. You have to know exactly what it is you're getting on the free and what you're not getting on the premium. And you're okay with living with not getting the premium stuff because that's how they're making their money. Or maybe you want to pay for the premium. If so, good for you, but you've got to be aware of that. You also be aware of any organization that, by the way, gives you something completely, totally for free. Cause you need to ask the question, how are they making money? wait, if you're getting this away for free, you got to be making money somehow. Is it because you are being run by an endowment, a trust by which, you know, a lot of somebody who's wealthy has given you money to do this. Okay. That's fine. Or are you based on the eyeballs model, which is basically, this is free because guess what? You know what? We're going to get so many users, then we're going to sell ads against those users. Okay. That's a traditional model. It's the one that you know of that Facebook, Google, and Instagram run. The problem with that model is this, is that it's not really free. The, nothing is really ever free. There is going to be a cost. And the cost in the case of Instagram, Google, and uh, Facebook is, is obviously it's your time and attention because you're giving them time and attention in return getting, you know, you're getting what you think are is a, is a relationship experience mixed in with ads. So you need to figure out how are they making their money? How's that? What's the catch? There's always going to be a catch. What is the catch? And are you okay with living with that catch? And sometimes what I realize when I'm going with a freemium model, I've got to be okay with the catch being, I'm going to get a lot of hyper aggressive marketing and a lot of feature sets are going to be in the premium that I probably am going to want. If it's a eyeballs game where basically they make their money off of eyeballs and people coming to this, to their stuff in mass in order for them to make money off of ads. I just got to be comfortable with the fact that I'm going to be inundated with ads and that my data that I'm using is not really ever my data. Even though they say I can export it out, they're going to sell the data off. Uh, that's just the way those organizations work. So you got to be comfortable with taking your church's money and doing that with it. Uh, in other words, um, or sorry, take your money, but your money, church's resources. Because part of this is when I say, 
three questions to ask before you spend your church's money probably should have been rephrased three questions to ask before you spend your church's resources. Cause I'm also talking about your time as well is the time and effort you're going to put into that going to be worth it. And that's really what question three really asks is, is how do they make their money? And because I'm going to give them either I'm giving them money or I'm going to give them my time and my effort, my res- my own personal resources. So I want to make sure that I'm judging that well. And, and, and I, and keep in mind when I talk about this in general, I cost is a factor for a lot of us. Um, This is a thing that when we talk about this world, this is kind of one of those things where if there's an area in the church communications world specifically, because I think we're a little more monetary intensive in terms of resources of what we use in terms of the digital space. um, One of the areas that's a little bit hot for us is the fact that like churches try to be as frugal as they can with their dollars. And a lot of tech companies don't really work well in a market by which people are trying to run for the cheapest option. So what happens is, is that we try to go to the cheapest option. The end provider tries to give us the cheapest option, but you know, we end up getting a faulty product. And then, then all of a sudden it just becomes this, you know, we're all chasing the lowest common denominator. So I say that to say this, that like when you look for a product, you may have to spend a little bit more on a product to get the right product. You probably, if you if you ask these three questions and you get all three are red flags, then you know what? You have to spend a little bit more money. You know, your website, you may have to go to a different domain, a domain provider or a different hosting solution because to get a better result for what you need. So you may have to do those type of things because cost is a factor. But you want to keep that in mind as you're asking these questions that, you know, it, is the price too good to be true, if you will? So you have to think through those things. So these are the three questions I ask. Again, am I their guinea pig? What happens if you want to fail? Uh, if they if they fail or you want to leave, what's the backup plan? And how do they make their money? And then I factor all that in with, okay, what's it really going to cost? And is the cost actually really worth it? So those are the things I think about when I am thinking through how to spend our church's resources and money and really, honestly, my team's time because our time and effort are going to go into a lot of making these resources happen for our church. So there you go. That's some stuff for y'all to think through as you think through how to spend your time, uh, your church's time, money, and resources. Thanks for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, go on iTunes, leave us a rating or hit the subscribe button. Or you know what? Share it with somebody else on your staff. I'm sure they would love to listen to it as well. Until next week, you guys take care. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.